This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, political stalemate in Israel as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fails to form a new government. So what happens now and could the country have yet another election? The battle over the rights of transgender girl athletes versus the rights of biological girls. We're going to take a look at how that is playing out all across the country. Is anything you do online private? We're going to take a look at why your smartphone and your computer could become an informant. And catching up with the band whose popular song produced a major motion picture. See what new ventures Mercy Me has created following I Can Only Imagine. All those stories and more are ahead in this edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to begin this half hour with a political stalemate in Israel for the third time in two years. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu failed to form a new government when his mandate expired at midnight last night. Now, Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, has begun meeting with various parties to determine who should receive the next mandate to form a coalition. It's expected he will choose Yair Lapid, who gained the second most seats after Netanyahu's Likud party. Our CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell is here now with more. So, Chris, who is Yair Lapid and what challenges would he face if he is chosen to form a new government? Well, Ephraim, uh, first of all, Yair Lapid, he's head of what's called the Yeshatid Party. Uh, Yeshatid means there is a future. Uh, he re represents the center left of Israel, a more secular Israel, uh, people down perhaps around Tel Aviv and that, and that area. He's a former TV journalist. Uh, his father was Tommy Lapid, who was very anti-religious. He really set up, uh, his father, that is, set up a party really opposing the ultra-Orthodox. Now, the challenges that he has right now is trying to get together these natural political adversaries. One thing that, uh, that unites all of these parties uh, is that they want uh, to uh, replace Benjamin Netanyahu. They call themselves the change bloc. Now, this is right-wing parties, left-wing parties even Arab parties. Uh, but they have major differences on economic issues, on the peace negotiations. And so even if they do able to cobble together, you know, 61 seats, uh, many think uh, it may not last. But that's probably what uh, President Reuven Rivlin will do. Uh, many people expect he's going to uh, choose uh, Yair Lapid to try to form the next government. He can't form a new government. Yeah, well, Rivlin, uh, if he can't form a government, then President Rivlin uh, is going to open it up to the Knesset uh, for, 21, uh, for 21 days, uh, for the next three, three weeks. And so then anyone in the Knesset uh, can form 61 seats. They can become the prime minister. It's an unlikely scenario, but it actually could happen. Uh, and if, they, if that doesn't happen, uh, they could go to uh, new elections uh, for the fifth time in just more than... Uh, uh, two years, Ephraim. Mm, I tell you. Chris, you did sit down with another leading Israeli figure, Naftali Bennett. Tell us what he, why he's important and who he does favor. Well, he's very important, uh, Ephraim, because he has seven seats. Now, the seven seats is not a lot when you compare it to the Likud that had 20, Yeshitid that had 17. Uh, but right now, he's uh, some people call him not necessarily a kingmaker, but a prince maker. Uh, in other words, those seven seats are essential. It was essential for uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. If he was going to be able to form a government, it's really essential for this change block. They'd need Naftali Bennett's seven seats. Now, the kingmaker in this whole uh, scenario Scenario, Ephraim could be a man named uh, Mahmoud, uh, not Mahmoud, Mansour Abbas, who's head of the Ra'am party. Now that's an Islamist party. Now they uh, both, both Netanyahu would have needed those four seats, and this change block, perhaps led by Yair Lapid, would have to have Ram. So the, he really could become the kingmaker. But Naftali Bennett is very important because those seven seats, as I said. Uh, both uh, the change block is going to need them or Netanyahu would have needed them. He's right wing and he really doesn't want to go uh, with many of these parties that are uh, uh, like the far left or these Islamist parties. But really, he, uh, he d wants to avoid fifth election. And the important point, uh, Ephraim, is that he could become the first prime minister in a rotation with Yair Lapid. Well, Chris, all of this playing out, we have to ask, could Israel actually go to a fifth election in just over two years later this year? 
Well, actually, it, it's possible, Ephraim. Uh, one pundit said uh, there's a 40 percent chance of a new government, 60 percent chance of new elections. Uh, and it really, that just reflects the kind of stalemate right now in uh, Israeli politics, a really divided government. And with all the threats that Israel facing, uh, many people really feel they do need some sort of a stable government to face threats like the Iranian nuclear threat. Indeed. Chris Mitchell, thank you so much for your insight. Much appreciated. Back here at home, another major political story as congressional Republicans are apparently getting ready to remove Liz Cheney from her position as the number three GOP leader in the House. Cheney was one of 10 House Republicans to vote to impeach President Donald Trump over the Capitol Hill riot back in January. On Monday, former President Trump called Joe Biden's victory in November the big lie, with Cheney replying the election was not stolen. She has strongly criticized the former president's language. The former president um, is using the same language that he knows provoked violence on January 6th. But House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy told Fox News and Fox and Friends Tuesday Cheney's vote to impeach the president was not the issue. He said the concern was her ability to do her job. From members concerned about her ability to carry out the job as conference chair, to carry out the message. Axios reports McCarthy was caught on an open microphone before his appearance on Fox saying, I think she's got real problems. I've had it with I've had it with her. You know, I've lost confidence. The vote on Cheney could come as soon as next week. CNN reports New York Representative Elise Stefanik, a strong supporter of President Trump, is working to gain enough votes to take Cheney's place. Republicans are trying to focus their efforts on retaking the House from Democrats in next year's elections. Here's a look at some other stories in the headlines right now. President Trump launching his new social media platform today. Fox reporting the launch, which comes on the same day the Facebook Oversight Board will announce if he can return to Facebook and Instagram. President Biden laying out a new vaccination goal, saying he wants to deliver at least one shot to 70 percent of adult Americans by the 4th of July. The announcement comes as demand for the current vaccines has dropped off nationwide. And former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin has filed for a mistrial after his conviction in the murder of George Floyd. Chauvin's attorney says pretrial publicity affected the trial. And a photograph of one of the jurors has surfaced showing him wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt at a protest last August with words, get your knee off our neck on it. The battle over transgender is heating up at the state level where lawmakers are taking steps to protect the rights of girls and women. And as Charlene Aaron reports, one trans icon is making the case that biological boys who have transitioned to girls should not compete in female sports. Across the country, multiple states are taking steps to block trans athletes from competing in girls' sports through new legislation. Many say it's a much-needed move to protect young boys and girls. More than 30 states introducing bills restricting trans youth from access to girls' sports. Seven states have laws or executive orders keeping transgender students from competing on girls' sports teams in public schools. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis promising to sign a similar bill into law in the Sunshine State. Oh yeah, we're going to protect our girls. I have a four-year-old daughter <laughs> and a one-year-old daughter, wow. and they're both very athletic, and we want to have opportunities for, for our girls. They deserve an even playing field. All of this in response to the Biden administration's executive order, prioritizing transgender rights by opening up public school bathrooms, locker rooms, and sports to all students regardless of their biological sex. Beth Stelzer of Save Women's Sports applauds the wave of Republican-led legislation. Men and women, nonpartisan alike, we can all see this is just a common sense issue. And it's a really good thing. Recent comments from Olympic gold medalist and California gubernatorial candidate Caitlyn Jenner, who is transgender, is bringing more attention to the issue. This is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girl sports in school. It just isn't fair. And we have to protect 
girls sports. Hundreds marched in Asheville, North Carolina, protesting against proposed legislation barring trans girls from competing in female sports. As a parent of a trans child, I'm scared for them. Some accusing Jenner of playing politics, pointing out previous statements. The Olympic Committee thinks it's fair. I'm fine with it. Yes. Great. Yeah, because there's no uh, issue, you know, no big advantage. Not true, argues Stelzer. When we allow males to compete in female sports, it is the end of female sports. We already have males that hold female records, and it won't be long before, for example, college recruiters and coaches, they're going to see that, oh, that team has a male on it, and that's what gives them the advantage. I'm going to get a couple more males, and it won't be long, and we'll have all male female sports. LGBTQ advocates say the data doesn't support that. It is negligible difference when uh, trans girls and trans women go through the proper medical process. But track athlete Selena Soul and other women athletes in Connecticut disagree. In the last two years, two trans athletes have taken 15 Connecticut state championship titles competing in women's events. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Coming up, is there such a thing as online privacy? Big tech wants to track your moves online. We're going to tell you how they're pushing new technology to turn your smartphone and computer into an informant. We'll have that story for you when we come back. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Big Tech wants to track everything you do and see online, and it has found a way to do just that. Adele Hurt has the story. In the film Songbird, it's 2024. COVID is still around, and phones act like informants that report people to the government. Anomaly detected. Our guards will be arriving in four to six hours. Now a coalition of big tech and mainstream media companies are pushing new technology that could turn your phone or computer into an informant. Everything created on a device with a computer chip could be tracked back to the author. Everything. Every post, every photo, every video will have the creator's digital signature on it. It's called the Coalition for Content Providence and Authenticity. And it has the backing of the biggest names in tech and media. 
it's being applauded as a way to stamp out disinformation on the Internet. But who decides what's disinformation? Big tech will decide and will have the tools to punish the person behind it. If there was any online privacy left, this new system being proposed would put an end to it. It's not, not a bad idea to track down on information that's false or misleading or deceptive. The problem is who are you going to put in charge of that? Alumbo Kari writes for Breitbart.com and is the author of Deleted, Big Tech's battle to erase the Trump movement and steal the election. The people who have been put in charge of it over the past four years, Silicon Valley companies, they've abused that power to crack down on information and viewpoints that they don't like. They've used it as a tool of political interference. This new project could also help the establishment media, which has been losing audience and money to the alternative media. The entire media, the entire establishment is on board with cracking down on so-called misinformation. It's how they've censored the Internet over the past four years. We asked the coalition if the new technology would have some sort of opt-out provision or a safeguard to prevent it from being used as a weapon against free speech. The coalition did not respond. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Still ahead, we're catching up with the band whose popular song produced a major motion picture. See what new ventures Mercy Me has created. Following, I can only imagine. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Their music has been the focus of a major motion picture, and now the men behind I Can Only Imagine have some new music to share. Mercy Me's latest album is called Inhale, Exhale, and once again, compelling real-life stories are behind the songs. We're sitting down with two of the members of the band, Bart and Mike. Can't believe we've come this far and it feels just like getting started. Somehow we're still running like those kids back then. You guys have had such great success already. How does this project compare to what you've done in the past in your minds for both of you? It's one of our worst albums we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> does, anybody, does anybody ever say that? I always wonder, like, it's like, is it your best project? No, it's like fourth. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you feel it? The stream inside is still alive today. It's incredibly special to me for some obvious reasons, like my son being on it. But uh, but the biggest one for me is I can't think of an album that is literally kind of time stamped a period of our life. For me, it's almost like a postcard from the pandemic. Like when I look back 10 years from now, I'll know even from the name of the album to the artwork is like this artistic the image of a set of lungs um it's like 
yes it, and that's the reason there's 16 songs and and we kept writing it all these songs kind of came from this season too afraid of the unknown and there's everything from like super poppy moments to like old school gospel to like schizophrenic rock like it's literally across the map and uh I, I'm really proud of the way it turned out and the, all the influences that we kind of ran through the Mercy Me filter. To, it, it's by far the most diverse thing we've ever done. My name is Gary Miracle. And on New Year's Eve 2019, I was airlifted to a hospital in Orlando, Florida. And I fell into septic shock. And 107 days later, I came out of the hospital and I had lost all four of my limbs. Tell me about the song that was written and that we're seeing now honor um, Gary. Yeah, um, man, watching Gary go through what he went through and especially from a distance because of the pandemic, um, you know, I don't think we realized how much it was impacting what we were writing at the time. And Say I Won't started as more of a, it's, you know, the verses are about your identity in Christ and when you realize what's inside of you, everything changes. And then by the time I was finished with in watching Gary's story, it became this overcomer kind of Rocky moment. Like, you know, by the end, it's I mean, even the whole song has a little bit of an attitude to it. Like, I dare you to say that I can't do this. And that's all Gary's fault. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> an emotional video something that would just really you know since we couldn't reach our fans any other way something that would really impact them and out of the conversation i had with gary i called him and said hey man would you let us tell your story for you since you talk about how you're not ready yet and and he was in tears he's like man this is something we've been praying for and and yeah he was absolutely and and the video turned out better than we ever thought possible and um and we kind of created a monster because he'll literally text almost every day like hey man it's slowing down on the charts what's going on <laughs> like, well, I, we couldn't be prouder to be able to kind of you know be a part of this journey with him and and uh you know we trust each other like crazy and it's uh you know he said i can't imagine anybody else going through this with him and yeah it's just it's you know after 25 years of being dear friends it just feels fitting that you know we could help share a story your favorite track today my favorite is a song called let yourself be loved it starts out talking about you know it's a simple concept for us to be like god asks us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves and that shouldn't be a very hard thing but we we're not really great at loving ourselves like i look in the mirror i see every mistake i make i don't see myself as jesus sees me it's a big one man like i for the longest time i you know when it says love your neighbor as yourself i just thought that we weren't good at that and but it didn't really make sense since Christ is in us and that, you know, we're a new creation. It, I just was like, how are we not good at this? And then one day thought, wait, the problem is, is that we're not that fond of ourselves. And so maybe we are genuinely loving our neighbors with everything that we have, but we don't, we don't like what we see when we look in the mirror. So we have to love ourselves first. How in the world do we do anything else without starting there? And so it sounds like such a simple message, but it, it genuinely probably is the most important message on the album. Mercy Me's Inhale, Exhale is out right now. We're sharing more from the band this evening on Studio 5, along with a new book and music project celebrating great women of the Bible. Singer Dante Bow is also taking us inside a new music collaboration from Maverick City Music and Elevation Worship called Old Church Basement. You can catch it all on Studio 5 beginning tonight at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, and you can find that on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, this year's annual public Bible reading marathon in our nation's capital. We're going to bring you a look at that when we come back. Please stay with us. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, Will we go to heaven? 
Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well respected brain experts. In this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. From Washington, D.C. Good evening and welcome to Faith Nation. Uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, John Jessup, Jenna Browder, and Eric Phillips. Bringing you the political news that matters. Regulations on the energy industry are going to have dramatic ripple effects throughout the economy. News you can trust. We're people who are committed to protecting the most weakest and the most vulnerable. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6. We head now to our nation's capital where hundreds of Christian believers are stepping up to the mic to take part in a scripture reading marathon. Participants need plenty of endurance as they read the entire Bible over 90 consecutive hours. The voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Before the pandemic, the Bible Marathon brought hundreds to the steps of the U.S. Capitol and state Capitol buildings. Organizers say the tradition recognizes the Bible is at the heart of America's founding principles, and it should be voiced at the heart of our nation. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is peace. I encourage you to protect your peace. It is God's gift to you, and losing your peace is too high of a price to pay. Trouble will come, but don't let it shake you and know this, it can't break you. With that word, I encourage you to make today a wonderful Wednesday. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. Both of them there at any time. Also, we'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen today. Email us at the address right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would love to hear from you. We look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow.